music you're hearing is jazz violinist Stefan Grappelli. Now, violin is not a common instrument for jazz music, but there have been a lot of great players. Joe Venuti and Stuff Smith named just two. Jazz violin began in New Orleans in the early 1900s. Arrangements for ragtime orchestras had parts for violins in which they were as important as the other instruments. Today, players like Jean-Luc Ponty have moved the electric violin into the mainstream of jazz rock fusion. But this episode is about Stefan Grappelli. Grappelli was born in Paris in 1908 with an Italian father and a French mother. Because of the approaching Great War, Ernesto, his father, subsequently entrusted his son to a Catholic orphanage. His first practical music lessons were in the street, watching and listening to how other musicians played. At the age of 15, Grappelli began playing in the street full-time to support himself. His playing caught the attention of an elderly violinist who invited him to accompany silent films in the pit orchestra at the Theatre Garmont. He played there for six hours daily over a two-year period. During breaks, Grappelli would visit nearby bars where he could listen to jazz on the jukebox. In 1928, he visited the Ambassador Hotel, where band leader Paul Whiteman with violinist Joe Venuti were playing. Jazz violinists were rare, and though Venuti played mainly commercial jazz themes and seldom improvised, Grappelli was struck by his bowing. As a result, Grappelli began developing a jazz-influenced style of violin music. Grappelli started playing with famed gypsy guitarist Django Reinhardt in 1934 when they formed the Du Hot Club de France. When you talk about a famous or not so famous figure, it's probably important to flesh out some of the person's history. But I'm not nearly as interested in Stefan Grappelli's history as I am his music. He first caught my attention when I was working as a disc jockey back in the late 60s. I remember one day searching through the vinyl library and finding a dusty LP cover titled Feeling Plus Finesse Equals Jazz, an album from 1962. I was doing a late night show called Night Flight into Jazz, and I was so struck by the first track I played from that album that every one of the other tracks was featured during that week. Grappelli continued touring with great success up to the last year of his life in 1997. Erica, my wife, and I were lucky enough to catch one of his concerts at the Indiana Theater in Indianapolis. I invited my in-laws along for the event. Les, my mother-in-law, was a longtime jazz fan. I've always been in love with the sound of Stefan Grappelli. His feelings and mechanics were impeccable, and his carefree style was captivating. Les, my mother-in-law, and I both fell in love with one of Grappelli's albums that also featured horn player Bill Coleman. We both agreed that their styles were so loose and so relaxed They both played as though they just didn't give a damn. I'm sure that many of you will not pick up on this type of music, and I'm pretty sure many of you didn't even get this far. I hope you like these episodes, but if you don't, it's okay. To each his own. I'm a very lucky guy. I enjoy all types of music. Most of it, anyway. So, I have a lot more to enjoy. 
Stefan Grappelli has been and always will be one of my special favorites, and I'm glad I could share him with you. Thank you.